If you're using a Mac and you create video tutorials or video lectures or tabletop demonstration videos, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. Because if you're on a Mac, you have access to Apple Keynote, the free presentation software that comes bundled with every Mac. And the great thing about Keynote, it now has a feature called Live Video, and it is a game changer. With Keynote's Live Video feature, you can take video from your built-in FaceTime camera, an external USB webcam, a DSLR camera, your iPhone, or iPad display and add it directly into your Keynote presentation. You can now record video directly in Keynote. Let me show you. So here we are in Keynote. This is Keynote version 11.2. You'll need Keynote 11.2 or above to use Keynote's live video feature. So I have this demo project open with four slides. And what I'm gonna do is create a different style of video for each of these four slides so you can see what you can do with live video here in Keynote. So for this first slide, I'm gonna add a full screen talking head video that you typically use as an introduction to a presentation, a lecture, or a tutorial. So with the blank slide selected, go up to the top toolbar and select the media button. And from the drop-down menu, select live video. And you get this rectangular shape with this silhouetted icon of a person in the center of it. This shape represents a live video object. With the live video object selected on the slide, if you look to the right in the inspector, you can see we have a live video section with a few settings. The first setting is source. This is where you add and edit video sources you bring into Keynote. Typically, you'll have a default camera source already there. That's usually the built-in FaceTime camera on your Mac. The built-in FaceTime camera works fine, but the beauty of the live video feature in Keynote is that you can use external video sources. So for the full screen intro video on this first slide, I'm gonna use a mirrorless DSLR camera via a CamLink 4K USB capture card, which is connected to my Mac. You could also use an external USB webcam as you'll see later. To add the mirrorless camera as a video source, select the little downward facing arrow on the default camera source box, and you get this pop-out menu. You can see the default camera in the list with a check mark, meaning it's the video source being used at the moment. To add a new video source, select the plus button at the top right. And you get this dialog in the middle of the screen where you can add a new live video source. You can name your new live video source in this field up here. I'll name the new video source mirrorless cam. Next, select the menu at the bottom and up pops a list of the available video sources connected to your Mac. And there is the CamLink 4K, which is the mirrorless camera. I'll select it. And a preview of the mirrorless camera pops up in the middle of the live video dialog. Select the add button and the video feed from the mirrorless camera appears inside the live video object on the slide. You can also see the mirrorless camera listed under source in the live video inspector panel over here. With this live video source set up, you can do a few different things. Back over in the live video inspector, select the little downward pointing arrow and you get the live video sources panel. Now, if you wanted to switch to a different video source you have connected like another camera, you could do that by just clicking on the source in this panel. Select this little right facing arrow on the video source and you have the choice to delete this video source or you can edit it. If you select edit, it brings up a dialog where you can edit the name of the video source or replace the video source with a different video source. All right, what else can we do with this live video object? Well, you can click and drag it around the slide just like any other object in Keynote. You can scale the object by clicking and dragging on these corner handles. If you click and drag on this little green handle in the top left corner of the live video object, you can adjust its corner radius which rounds the corners of the video window. You can also adjust the corner radius using this dialog on the inspector panel over here. The scale control here adjusts the scale of the video source inside the live video window. Now, you wanna be careful with this one. It's a digital zoom. Too much zoom degrades the quality of the video. 
This mask setting down here is very cool. Select this menu and you get a few presets to choose from. These preset masks change the shape and aspect ratio of the live video object. Select Custom, and you can manually crop the window and zoom the video source inside the live video object to taste. When you're done, just hit the Done button. Lots of flexibility. The final setting to show you is this little camera icon on the live video object. Selecting that toggles the video feed off and on. So you can turn on live video for some slides and turn it off for others. Okay, for this first slide, I'm going to adjust the live video object so that it fills the entire slide. So we have a full screen video for the introduction of our presentation. All right, for this second slide, I'm going to add a small talking head video down here in the lower right corner of the slide. A typical picture in picture layout for tutorial or lecture style videos. So we'll go back up to the top toolbar and select media. And from the drop down menu, select live video. And the live video object appears on the slide. All right, over in the inspector, I'm going to make sure under live video source that cam link 4K is activated. All right, now I'm going to modify the live video object, making sure the live video object is selected. In the inspector, I'm going to go down to the mask section. And from the drop down menu, I'm going to select the circle preset. That puts my video source into a circular frame. Okay, now I'm going to drag on these corner handles to size the live video object so that it fits down in the right bottom corner of the slide. All right, now what I want to do is make this circular live video object stand out a bit more on the slide. So making sure the live video object is selected, I'll go over to the inspector and select the style button. Under the border section, I'm going to select the menu that says no border. And from the drop down, I'm going to select line. And I get a border around the circular live video frame. The default color of the border is black. So I'm going to change that by selecting the color selector down here. And from the preset colors, select white. And now I have a white border around the live video object to help it pop a bit on the slide. Now I can change the thickness of the border over here, but five points is fine. So now I have a nice picture in picture talking head video set up on my second slide, still using the mirrorless camera video source. All right, for this third slide, we're gonna get a little more creative with the live video feature here in Keynote. I'm gonna create a picture in picture using an overhead camera shot. A great setup for doing desktop demo videos. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the first slide with the live video object with the full screen mirrorless camera shot. I'm going to right click or control click on the live video object and select copy from the pop-up menu. You could also use the keyboard shortcut command C. Then I'm going to go back and select the third slide. Then right click or control click and select paste from the pop-up menu or you could use the keyboard shortcut command V to paste a copy of the mirrorless camera live video object onto this third slide. All right, now I'm gonna change the video source for this copy of the live video object with the full screenshot. I have a webcam mounted over my desk that I'll add as the new video source for this live video object. To add the webcam, like before, with the live video object selected in the inspector, select this little downward facing arrow on the video source in the live video source box. And you get the pop-up menu showing all the video sources. Select the plus button at the top right, and you get the dialog in the middle of the screen where you can add a new live video source. I'll name the source Overhead Webcam. I'll select the menu at the bottom, and from the list of connected video sources, I'll select Logitech Brio, which is the overhead webcam. And a preview of the webcam shot pops up in the middle of the live video dialog. Select the Add button, and the video feed from the webcam appears inside the live video object on the slide. You can also see the new webcam source selected under Source in the Live Video Inspector panel over here. And because I copied and pasted the full screen live video object from the first slide, 
the webcam shot is automatically full screen on this third slide. All right, next I'll go back and select the second slide. Then I'll select the circle frame talking head video, which is the mirrorless camera shot. I right click or control click, select copy, or I could use the keyboard shortcut command C. Then I'll go back and select the third slide, right click or control click on the slide and select paste. And again, you can also use the keyboard shortcut command V. And there's the circle frame video from the mirrorless camera feed on top of the webcam overhead shot. I've combined two different video sources on one slide. So now you can do a tabletop demonstration with a talking head shot all inside of Keynote. All right, for this fourth and final slide, I'm gonna use an iPad display as a live video source. You could also use your iPhone for this. There is one caveat. If you're on an M1 Mac, you need to be running macOS Monterey version 12 or higher to be able to use your iPhone or iPad display as a video source. Intel Macs running Big Sur 11.6 or higher can bring in iPhone and iPad displays no problem. To use your iPad or iPhone display as a video source, you first need to attach the device to your Mac using a cable, typically the USB cable that came with your iPad or iPhone. All right, I'll select the fourth slide. Then I'll add a new live video object by going up to the top toolbar and selecting the media button. And from the drop down menu, selecting live video. With the live video object selected, I'm gonna go over to the live video inspector panel. I'm gonna select this little downward facing arrow on the default camera source box. And from the pop up menu, select the plus button at the top right. And in the live video dialog, I'll name the new video source iPad display. I'll select the menu at the bottom and from the connected sources list, select iPad. And there is the iPad display in the preview window. I'll select the add button and the video feed from the iPad appears inside the live video object on the slide. I'll change the mask setting for the iPad display from device portrait to device landscape. I'll adjust the iPad live video object so that it fills the slide by adjusting the corner handles. Then I'll go back and select the third slide. Then I'll select the circle frame talking head live video object, right click or control click, select copy. Then I'll go back and select the fourth slide, right click or control click on the slide and select paste. And there's the circle frame video over top of the video feed from the iPad display. So now I can do things like do an iPad software tutorial or make a whiteboard video using my Apple Pencil and an application like GoodNotes. Demonstrate a website. Now, if you're wondering, you cannot capture audio from a live video source, just video. So audio from a website like YouTube, for example, will not play through a live video object. Wait a minute, Mike. Keynote's live video doesn't capture audio? Well, what good is that? Am I just going to be a silent talking head in my presentation? Now, would I do that to you? In order to capture audio with your live video, you need to record your slideshow in Keynote. Now, I'm not going to go into extensive detail on how to use Keynote's recording feature in this video. I have a couple of other videos that go in depth on that, and I'll leave links to those videos in the description but I will walk you through the basic process. To record my slideshow, I'll first make sure the slide I want to start from is selected. Then I'll go up to the top menu and select Play, Record Slideshow. This opens Keynote Slideshow recording interface. Taking a quick look at this interface, this big window on the left shows the current slide, and the smaller window on the right shows the next slide, animation, transition, or build, in the build order so you can see what's coming next. Now this next part is very important. Remember what I said before, the live video object just captures video, not audio. So in order to capture your voice along with your live video in Keynote, you need to use the microphone recording feature down here in the Keynote recording interface. Now you can use the built-in microphone on your Mac, but I recommend using an external microphone for better quality. 
To set up your microphone for recording in Keynote, first close the Keynote recording interface by selecting this X button in the top right. Go up to the top menu and select the Apple icon. And from the menu, select System Preferences. Go over and select Sound to open the sound interface. Make sure the input button is selected. And from the list of audio inputs, select the microphone you want to use. Then speak into the mic at the level you use for your presentation and adjust the input level slider to make sure you have a strong audio level without distorting. You don't want your mic level to peak past the third or second to last dot on the level indicator. With your microphone set up, exit out of System Preferences and go back to the Keynote recording interface. And when you speak into the microphone, you can see the mic level indicator down here bouncing back and forth, which means Keynote is getting an audio signal. So now your voice will be recorded along with your live video. All right, let's record. To record my slideshow, I select the record button. Then I can just step through my slides by hitting the forward arrow key. All right, I'll select the record button and I get this countdown. And we're recording. So this is the first slide with the full screen mirrorless camera shot. I'll move forward to the second slide here with me in the corner. And this is a typical keynote slide with graphics and uh, text. And you can see builds your animations. A nice little setup for doing tutorial videos. And then I'll go to the third slide. And here we are with the great tabletop shot and me in the corner down there in the circle frame, again with the mirrorless camera, great for tabletop demos. And then finally to the fourth slide with the iPad display. So we can do things like do um, iPad software tutorials or play websites, things like that. When I'm ready to stop recording, I'll just select the stop button. And at the bottom of the interface, you can see the timeline of my recording, which is this blue bar. Now I can play back my recorded slideshow by clicking and dragging the playhead back to the beginning of the timeline, or I can just select the rewind button, then press the play button to play back. And we're recording. So then there's the recorded slideshow with my live video talking head and voice recorded through an external microphone. Here. The great thing about Keynote is that it records a continuous independent audio track with your slideshow. So on slides that don't have a live video object, you can still record a voiceover. Very handy. All right, now that this slideshow is recorded, I can export it as a video. So to do that, I'm just gonna get out of the Keynote recording interface by clicking on this X button in the top right corner. Then I'll go up to the top menu in Keynote and select File, Export to Movie. And the Movie Export dialog pops up. So for playback, I'm gonna select the drop-down menu and select Slideshow Recording because I wanna export the recording that I just made. Under the Resolution menu, I'll select 1080p. This will export my slideshow as a high-definition 1920 by 1080 video. And I'll go down here and select Next. Then I get the familiar save dialog. I'll give the exported video a file name, select a location to save to on my Mac, then I'll hit export. And the recorded keynote slideshow is exported as a high definition video that I can share. Here's a quick look at the final exported video. And we're recording. So this is the first Here's slide, slide one, a full screen mirrorless camera shot. And this is a typical keynote slide with graphics. Here's and slide two. Uh, text, and you can see builds your animations. And here we are with the great tabletop shot. Slide three. The down there in the circle frame. And then finally to the fourth slide with. And slide four. iPad display. And keep in mind, the live video object is like pretty much every other type of object in Keynote. So you can animate it using builds and actions to add some pizzazz to your presentation. And everything that I showed you that we recorded, you can do live through a platform like Zoom or any other platform that allows you to share your screen and your microphone sound.